Hi guys, it's Alyssa. I am here with another reading for you guys today. So our topic for this week's reading is something a bit different. I don't think I've done this on this channel before. Um, it's just going to be something kind of fun and lighthearted. Uh, today we're talking about what your person of interest likes about you. So this could be anything from physical traits, personality traits, um, anything at all that your person finds attractive, appealing, or likable about you in general, that's what we're going to be talking about, that's what we're going to be asking about. So, um, like I said, just something kind of fun. We have four groups to choose from, and to help you pick, I have some bottles of essential oils. They're all different scents, um, so I want you to just choose based on whatever whatever stands out to you whether it's the number of the group the name of the scent the colors on the bottle whatever uh stands out to you most whatever you feel calls to you most make your choice based on that so the first group that we have is my personal favorite scent this is lavender for group two we have peppermint. Group three is orange. Please focus. Please focus. There we go. This is orange, um, which is super refreshing. And for group four, we have tea tree oil. I don't know how many people have actually smelled tea tree oil before. It doesn't smell super super appealing in my opinion um but some people love it so i will give you guys a minute to make your choice and then we will get started okay so let me move these to the side we're going to start off with group one, which was lavender. So, um, I think that for these readings today, I'm going to be using this deck. This is the Tarot of Sexual Magic. Um, the imagery on these cards is kind of spicy, just so you know. Um, I mean, it's the Tarot of Sexual Magic, so you can kind of guess what the pictures look like. Um, Anyway, so, group one, what does your person like about you? What does group one's person like about them? First card that we have here is the King of Wands. too many cards. The Six of Pentacles. Okay, I'm getting something interesting already. We've got the Hanged Man. <clears throat> Four of Swords. The Emperor. And let me get one, maybe one or two more. Okay. We have the Devil and the Page of Wands. Okay, so... The 
first thing that I'm getting with these cards is an association with food, which is kind of interesting. Um, we've got three cards here that have food on them. The Six of Pentacles, we've got some apples. The Three of Cups, we have something down here that looks like some kind of, I don't know, pudding. Um, and then with the Emperor, we have this little plate here with food on it. So, association with food. Okay, so that means, that could mean a couple of things. This person either thinks that you make really good food, you're a very good cook, you're very talented in the kitchen. Um, if they've never eaten anything that you've made though, obviously that's probably not going to be applicable. Um, if that's not the case, then... Okay, they're saying that you remind them of food in the sense that you're tasty and scrumptious. You look like a snack. You look like a snack. Um, okay, yeah. Or, or maybe both. You look like a snack and you make good snacks. Something like that. That's very endearing. Um, with the King of Wands here and the Page of Wands, there's a lot of passion uh, with these two cards. There's a lot of excitement and like fiery, fiery energy because wands correspond to the fire element. So they're kind of intense cards, right? Um, these two cards tell me that, I think it's interesting that in both of these images, the, they have pictures of people um, embracing each other. So this tells me that, you know, this person is extremely physically attracted to you. There's a lot about your physical appearance that they um, find to be very likable. Um, in particular, I'm getting hair. They feel like you have very nice hair, soft hair, shiny, you know, it's like they, they want to just kind of run their fingers through it and feel, feel, you know, how soft it is, how smooth. Um, <clears throat> for some of you, it's like, they think about... Okay, this isn't going to be applicable for everyone because not everybody has this type of hair. But if you have hair, if your hair type is more, I want to say full, like fluffy, kind of big, not frizzy necessarily, but just like kind of like if you have big fluffy hair, um, they think about using it as a pillow. They think about like laying their head in it and, and using it as a pillow. <laughs> Um, and they think it's really cute. They think it's really cute. You might feel like your hair is annoying um, because maybe it has a tendency to just kind of do whatever it wants and be all over the place, you know, and not cooperate with you, but they find that really adorable. And I think your hair is one of the things that really stands out to them the most, or at least it was when they first met you. And I think it's still something that they like a lot about you. Um, so we have that that really intense physical attraction. Um, I feel as though this person is there's a lot I'm getting a lot about like your physical build, your physique that they enjoy. So, you know, regardless of your gender, they kind of, they, they seem to see you as, like, the ideal, the ideal body type or body shape for your gender. Does that make sense? So, like, Like, if you're a man, they see you as being very strong and, you know, well-built, and some of you are laughing about that, but it's like, you don't have to have, 
you know, rock hard abs to be strong and well built. Um, and if you're a woman, it's like they love the butt. They love the the curvature of your body. It's like something that they could get lost in. And, and I am I am getting butt specifically, and that's that's regardless of whether you're male or female or you know that's <laughs> that's like no, whoever you are they think you have a nice butt um and i do get kind of a particularly with the devil and the emperor card being here i do get kind of a masculine energy that again goes beyond your gender it's like there's there's this energy of assertiveness and boldness that I think they see in you that they find very admirable and very attractive. So you might be a little bit of a dominating person, just, you know, your personality or just somebody who really has presence, somebody who can command a room. And I feel like that's very captivating to them. It's very captivating to them. Um, with the Four of Swords here, we have this, these, these people here, this guy is, I don't know what he's supposed to be doing to this woman's face, but it kind of looks like he's controlling her in some way. He is acting as the dominant partner in this scenario. And she's just kind of, you know, she's kind of just sitting on the floor, like, letting him manipulate her, like physically you know kind of do what he wants put her where he wants her to be and that's kind of like they kind of see you that way it's like they want to just sort of you have the kind of presence and the kind of energy that makes them want to just basically do what you tell them you seem to be it, it seems like you're very convincing for them and again compelling is a word that keeps coming to mind here um, I feel like this is somebody who, yeah, I feel like they could just sort of listen to you talk for hours on end without getting bored. And with the devil card being here as well, this card is... You know, this card is about, um, it, it has a very sexual kind of energy, again. Um, it also, this card to me is kind of like the kinky card. When it's not representing um, toxicity or addiction, codependency situations, then this is the other side of that that sort of kinky, very sexual energy is the other side of this card for me. And so, you know, I'm not getting that they see you as toxic or really domineering in a negative way, but dominating in a good way, in, in the sense that, like, they want you to do that. Like, they're, they seem to be into that. And they also seem to feel as if you're someone that they can rely upon. They're, you're someone they can trust. That, you know, the Emperor card and the King of Wands, they are very, I mean, they're, they're fairly reliable figures, particularly the Emperor. They're pretty reliable figures. Um, and the Emperor specifically is very stable. He's very, you know, in control, in charge. Um, so I feel like this person sees you as very reliable, someone they can count on to be there for them when they need someone. And I'm getting that this person feels as though you are a bit of a challenge. Again, not in a bad way, because we're talking about things that they like about you. 
with the hanged man this card talks about changing perspectives so and also the four of swords can represent reflection and, and contemplation doing some kind of inner work so i feel like you their relationship with you or just you in general are a bit challenging to them in the sense that you challenge their beliefs you challenge their opinions you challenge their thought processes about things you make them kind of see things from a different point of view from a point of view that maybe they've never considered before it's almost like you have helped to broaden their horizons you have helped to change their minds about certain things or you know make them more open to certain things that they were a bit closed off to in the past and so it's like challenging in a good way that you you challenge their opinions you challenge their beliefs um that they might not really put a lot of thought into otherwise so there's also this synergy of like intellectual stimulation So, you know, obviously it seems to me like they, they see you as a highly intelligent person as well, but just a unique person, someone who, someone who's different from anybody else that they have known. Um, and I'm getting that they also really enjoy your conversations. Um, it's, it seems to me like from their perspective, your, your talks tend to be very balanced and, and they feel as if they are really communicating with an equal you know someone who is investing in them just as much as they are in you um someone who or or you know someone who's equally as intelligent or equally as um invested in whatever the topic of conversation may be um in the three of cups here this card is commonly associated with you know friendship celebrations uh it can talk about partying having a good time with loved ones and friends um in this context i'm getting that you know this is just kind of a fun light-hearted vibe it's like even though you know there's they seem to see many facets to you so there's that very sexual kind of sort of you know like i said kinky kind of um vibe going on that they like there's also that intellect there's also that reliability there's also that feeling of being equals and then the three of cups here is talking about on top of all of those things i also feel like you're someone that they can have a lot of fun with you make them i think you make them laugh i think you make them feel good about themselves it's like when you walk into a room you just kind of brighten everything up that's how they see you that's how they're interpreting it anyway because when it, it seems to me like when when you walk into a room or when they talk to you you brighten up their life you brighten up their day and so they're just kind of projecting that onto everyone else it's like yeah yeah like this is somebody that everybody likes like that's how they see you regardless of whether or not everybody actually you know if if you really are a people person or not it's like that's how they that's how they're perceiving you because they just see you as so charismatic and compelling and fun and just you know fun to be around I want to pull out one of these cards as well, see if there's anything they want to add. Let your friends help you and it is safe for you to love. So this is kind of saying a similar thing as far as that reliability and that friendliness, that charisma, that people person kind of vibe. Um, you're somebody that they feel like they could ask for help if they needed to and they would be able to count on you to help them out. Um, and you're somebody that they wouldn't really be afraid to ask for help because they wouldn't worry about, 
you holding a grudge, you know, you forcing them to pay them back somehow. Because it's like, from their point of view, that's not how they see you. They see you as somebody who just gives very freely, someone who's just, you know, willing to help just because. Um, and it is safe for you to love, open your heart to give and receive the highest energy of all. I feel like this person trusts you a lot. This person trusts you with their feelings and with their most personal, you know, deepest thoughts about things. And they feel like they're safe sharing personal things with you. Because, again, you seem to be very reliable from their perspective. And um, it's like they, they trust that you're not going to go telling their secrets. They trust that. Um, you're not going to judge them harshly, uh, you know, for what they say or what they're doing. Um, it's just, it seems to me like there's this, this understanding. And they are very appreciative of that. And they feel like that's something that they, they can't get from many people, but they can get that from you. And so there's definitely a lot of appreciation that I'm getting from this person. So, group one, that's what I have for you. Um, that's what your person of interest finds likable uh, and, and attractive about you. I hope this was interesting. I hope this resonated with you. If not, sorry. Um, maybe try a different pile. This is just a general reading, so you have to just kind of take what applies to your situation and leave the rest because this is intended to apply to a large group of people. Um, so it's probably not going to resonate 100%. Um, anyway, thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope I see you next time. We are going to move on now to the peppermint group. So for, okay, so for, um, for you guys, I think I'm going to use this deck. My, my basic, my standard Ryder and Waite Smith deck. For group one, I used the Tarot of Sexual Magic, and I had kind of intended to use that for all of them, but right now I'm feeling like this is the way to go for you guys. So group two, group two, what does your person like about you? What do they like about you? What do they find attractive about you? What does group two's person like about them? We have the Ten of Wands. That's too many cards. Can I just get one at a time, please? Okay. Should I take these cards? Yes, okay. So we have the Ten of Wands, the Hermit, the Seven of Pentacles, the Knight of Wands. Right away, I do get, oh, I do get a very um, excitable kind of vibe here, particularly from the Knight of Wands. And I'm also getting Nine of Swords. Interesting. I'm also getting a kind of like a duality here. And I'll explain what I mean by that in a second. Can I just get one more card, please? Whoa. cards coming up here, particularly the Nine of Swords and the Tower, um, because these are cards that usually are not super positive. Um, the Nine of Swords is associated very much with anxiety, stress, worry, uh, overthinking things, losing sleep at night. The Tower card usually talks about some kind of really big, intense change happening 
something that kind of crumbles your foundations, kind of forces you to let your walls down, breaks apart your expectations, and forces you to rebuild, to pick up the pieces. It's, it's something that really shakes you to your core. Um, so, like I was saying a minute ago, I'm getting this duality. I'm getting a very, a very logical, rational kind of vibe, and I'm also getting a very excitable, sort of childlike energy. So that tells me that the person you're thinking of sees you as having two very different sides to yourself. Okay, on the one hand, I think they see you kind of as the Knight of Wands, very excitable, very passionate about things, somebody who really is serious about what they believe in and really willing to stand up for what they believe in. Okay, the Knight of Wands is a little bit of an immature kind of energy, um, a little bit... I mean, very, just very enthusiastic. He may have a tendency to be a bit naive at times. But I think that that um, sort of childlike quality, that, you know, very enthusiastic, very peppy <laughs> at times, very, you know, I'm really excited about this, or this is what I think about this. It, it's kind of like, they see that side of you as being very cute, very, um, very appealing because it makes them want to take care of you and protect you. Now that's not to say that they see you as childish or inexperienced or unintelligent because on the contrary, we have some cards here that really speak of intelligence and cunning and just real like power, like personal power. We have the Hermit card. This card is about introspection doing some kind of inner work, some kind of contemplation. Um, the Hermit is a very wise figure. The Hermit is someone who likes to keep to themselves a lot, who really has a firm grasp on who they are and what they want out of life and where they're going. So it seems to me like they see you in some regards as, again, this very excitable, passionate, almost childlike person, but also at the same time, they're seeing you as wise and kind of spiritual and like really on top of things, very emotionally intelligent. I'm getting a lot of emotional intelligence and then just intelligence in general. Um, I think that they, they feel like you're really good with money with your finances. The Seven of Pentacles is really about planning ahead. It's about having, um, it's like a, having a, having a good foundation, you know, you're stable, you have things under control, and you're planning ahead for the future so that you can maintain your stability and acquire more. You can accumulate further, um, stability and success. Um, so I'm, I'm actually getting really strong, like, Virgo vibes from you, the viewer. So if you're a Virgo or you have Virgo predominant in your chart somewhere, I would say this most likely is definitely your reading. Um, some of you may be a little bit unsure about how this Knight of Wands energy plays a role in your relationship or your connection with this person like how are they seeing me as kind of childlike and you know enthusiastic it's um it may not actually manifest as extremely 
as I might be making it sound for some of you. For some of you, it's just kind of... Okay, for some of you, it's... It's a bit more subdued than the Knight of Wands card might, you know, typically imply. And what I mean by that is... You may not see yourself as being all that passionate or all that excited about something, but the pers this person can see in you a level of excitement or passion or enthusiasm or whatever that may not be typical. Does that make sense? Because I feel like a lot of you who picked this group are, on a normal day, fairly subdued, fairly low-key people. People who maybe don't let your emotions show a whole lot, with the Queen of Swords being here. Um, the Queen of Swords is a pretty unemotional person. She's very logic-minded, very rational and practical. She's not, you know, she doesn't express herself real strongly even if she is feeling a strong emotion she kind of keeps it under wraps so a lot of you may be like that typically but i think this person when you when you do feel kind of excited about something i think they really pick up on that and they really enjoy seeing that they really enjoy seeing you feeling passionate about something feeling excited about something and it's like that is kind of like the inner child in you that they're picking up on. And they love that. And they want to protect that and like nurture that. Because it's, it's not that they see anything wrong with you being like this Queen of Swords. It's not that they see anything wrong with you being very, you know, straightforward to the point, very no nonsense. There's nothing wrong with that from their perspective. Um, it's just that they like this part of you too. They like that more emotional, intense side of you too. Um, so they they think that you're very successful. They think that you're very, I'm, I just keep hearing the word intelligent, like so smart, so like crazy smart um, and wise. It's like you're, you're very intelligent, but also you have a lot of wisdom. It's like they definitely see you as kind of an old soul, you know? Um, with the Nine of Swords, like I said, this card is about anxiety and stress. Um, you may have a tendency to be anxious. You may have a tendency to get stressed out about things. Um, and this isn't saying that they like seeing you worried or, or anything like that. Um, but this is saying that I think they find it appealing how much you care about things. And it's kind of going back to the Knight of Wands energy of, you know, just being very passionate about what you believe in and what you care about. Um, I think they like how much you care about things. And sometimes when you may be feeling very stressed, very overwhelmed, they like having that opportunity to try and help you. They like having that opportunity to, to try to, you know, calm you down and make you feel at ease. Does that make sense? So it's not that they like seeing you that way, it's just that they like having the chance to do something for you, to, to help you in some way. Um, because I'm also getting that you help them a lot. Um, the Ten of Wands is about something that is a burden. It's, it's something that you're carrying around with you, something that weighs on you heavily. This card implies to me that you are someone who helps them cope with things in their life. You're someone who really helps them get through their day. And you may not even realize how much you're doing for this person, but they feel like you are helping them to carry their burden, to, you know, carry their load in life. Um, and so they like that about you, and they also like 
having a chance to repay the favor in some way. The Tower card is, like I said, this card usually talks about like really intense changes and um, something that really shakes you, really, really shakes things up for you. In this particular context, this card is telling me that the main thing, I think the most important thing to them, the thing they love about you the most is that you have changed their life, basically. You have changed their whole life. You came in like this lightning bolt, struck them, really like knocked them down when they least expected it. And I think that you have forced them to reevaluate certain things about themselves or about their own life. And I think as a result of that reevaluation or that rebuilding, they've made some good insights about themselves, about who they are, about what they want. They've learned some new things about themselves. They feel like they're a better person because of you. And they seem to be very, very, very appreciative of that. I get, I get so much loving energy from this person. This person has a lot of love for you, and I feel like most of you have a lot of love for them as well, and it's like that reciprocation that's, it's just something that they, they want to just hold on to, and they want to just, they want to never, ever let go of it, because you are just too special. It's like you're just, uh one-of-a-kind person that they just can't afford to lose. I want to pull out one or two oracle cards and see if there's anything that they want to add to this. And then we will call it a day. We have deception. Interesting. Okay, so... Deception. It's it's funny because we've had several cards here with this, with this group that typically would be kind of negative cards. Um, so how do we interpret this in light of something that they like about you? This is, this seems to be going hand in hand with the tower card. It says on this card, someone is wearing a false self mask. So someone is concealing who they really are. Someone's not being true to themselves. I think as a result of you coming into their life and really just tearing everything apart and stomping on it, um, they have learned how to be truer to themselves. They've Again, they've learned more about who they are and they've learned how to really embrace certain things about themselves that maybe they repressed or, you know, didn't like to acknowledge before. Um, it seems to me like you've helped them realize areas where they may have been deceptive to themselves. They may have been deceiving or deluding themselves about certain things and you helped them realize that. And I think that you are still helping them in some way to gain new insights about themselves and, but also about other things, you know, on a regular basis. And again, you might not even realize that this is happening because it seems like It seems to me like this person might be a little bit similar to you in that they might not be super mushy, expressive. So this might not be the kind of thing that they're that they would just bring up, you know. By the way, you've changed my life. You've made me into a better person. You know, it, it's it just doesn't seem like that's the kind of thing that this person would just bring up on their own, but this is what they're thinking. This is what they're thinking, and it seems to me like they're so, so appreciative of it. And it's interesting because I'm not really getting, you know, with the first group, I got some physical characteristics as well that their person liked. Um, I'm not really getting that with this group, so that doesn't mean that this person doesn't find you physically attractive. I think they do, um, but it seems to me like the physical aspect of this connection, the physical things, 
don't compare to the emotional effects that you have on them. The spiritual effects, the, you know, the internal stuff. It's like the physical characteristics at the end of the day mean nothing. You could look like anything. <laughs> you could look like anything at all. And I think this person would still have so much love and fondness for you. So like the physicality may have been something that initially attracted them, but I think at this point, you know, they don't really care about that. For most of you, I think they do find you attractive physically, but they don't, it's not, it's not the point. It's not what they really care about. <laughs> it's the emotional connection. That's really what's important to this person, I feel. Although one thing, one specific thing that does come to mind is legs. They think you have nice legs. Um, so anyway, group two, that's, I, I think I'm going to leave it at that for today. Um, that's all the messages that I'm getting for you. We are going to move on to the next group now, but I hope that this resonated with you and I hope this was interesting. Um, if it didn't resonate uh, maybe try a different group or, you know, maybe I'm just not the reader for you. Um, take what applies to you and your situation and leave the rest behind. This is just general. Um, thank you so much for joining me today though. And I hope I see you next time. Bye. All right. So group three, those of you who chose the orange essential oil, Let's find out what your person of interest likes about you. What do they find attractive about you? What do they find appealing about you? I think I'm gonna use the Tarot of Sexual Magic for this group again. I used this for group one. Um, let's see what it has to tell us. So group one, group one, group three, <laughs> group three. What is group three's person like about them? We have the Page of Cups. Page of Cups right away gives me kind of a creative energy. So um, if you are a creative type, if you like to make things, if you're crafty, if you're artsy, then it seems to me like that's something that this person really finds attractive about you. But let's see what other cards want to come out. What does Group three's person... Whoa. What does group three's person like about them? Five of pentacles. Nine of pentacles. Six of wands. Oh my gosh. I have cards going everywhere. Eight of Swords and the High Priestess. Okay, so um, like I said, the first thing that comes to mind is creativity. So if you're kind of a creative person, um, you like to make things, you do art, if you're a painter, writer, whatever, it seems to me like they, this person really enjoys that about you. Um, in the in the picture on this card, we have the page here. He's trying to write a love letter, like the perfect love letter, and he keeps, you know, messing up, crumpling up the pages and throwing them away and trying, you know, starting over. Um, so this just, this talks to me about creativity. It talks to me about a little bit about perfectionism as well. Um, this person 
really thinks that you're quite talented, quite skilled. They wish you weren't quite such a perfectionist, though, because they're saying, like, you don't, you don't realize how good you are. You don't realize how how talented you really are. The Nine of Pentacles here has a little bit of, in this deck in particular, it has a little bit of a kind of intense, slightly obsessive energy to it. Um, we have this guy in this picture. He's cutting off a piece of this woman's hair while she's sleeping, which is kind of creepy. And you know, a little bit obsessive, right? Um, so that's, that's again kind of talking to me about that, like, perfectionism. Like, I feel as if this person, from their point of view, you are someone who really, who really has a, an appreciation for the finer things in life. That's how they're seeing you. They're seeing you as someone who likes to be surrounded by beautiful things, pleasant things, good smelling things. You know what I'm saying? Um, stuff along those lines. And it's like, this is, this is an intense passion for beauty and art. And all of the finer things in life. And this is also a passion for success. For success and independence. It's like they're seeing you as someone who needs everything to be going right. And it seems to me like they really find your dedication to that to be very admirable, very attractive. It's like, this person likes someone who's dedicated to things. This person likes someone who's willing to work hard for what they want and what they believe in. This, all of these cards here are really talking to me about work. Not necessarily, you know, a career, although it could be applicable to that. But just work in general, like this person sees you as a hard, hard worker. Someone who is always striving to do better. Someone who is always trying to improve, improve themselves, improve their circumstances. That's how they see you. And that's, that's something that I think this person really loves. You're someone who doesn't give up on things. You're someone who, when the going gets tough, you get tougher. You're always going to come out on top. You're always going to be victorious. The Six of Wands is about victory and success, and it's about recognition. So you, you recognize when something is within your reach, and you always reach for it. You may have a bit of a tendency to isolate yourself when you're really working hard towards something. Um, <clears throat> with the Eight of Swords here. Because the Eight of Swords is about isolation and really going within. But, you know, that again just kind of speaks to your devotion to the things that you're passionate about. The things that you believe in, the things that you want. And I think this person finds that very admirable, and I feel like this person wants to be more like that themselves. Because you're someone who doesn't give up on things. You're someone who is going to persist. You're someone who's not going to just walk away from something, abandon an idea or a plan or a project just because it's not really working out, you know? They see you as very highly motivated, very driven, very ambitious, and that is extremely appealing to them. They love that about you. They love that about you. And with the High Priestess here, it's like, in addition to those things, you're very wise. You're, um, 
you know, you're very ambitious and driven in terms of bettering your circumstances, in terms of work, career, projects, but you're not solely focused on the physical world, you know, the, the material world around you. You also have a balance between that and your inner self, you know, spirituality, religion, uh, whatever you may be into, it's like you have created a balance between developing the physical environment that you want to live in, but also developing your spiritual and emotional well-being. You also have this very rich inner life that you live. And so, you know, you're not just focused on one thing or the other. It's both. You found a balance between both. And that's, that's really cool to them um, that you can do that because in their prior experience, it's kind of like, you know, maybe they've They've only ever known people who were either like super spiritual, kind of hippie-ish, you know, not really interested in money or tangible things, tangible, you know, projects, or the opposite, someone who was very um, money motivated or success motivated, but not, not really taking care of their spiritual or emotional well-being. But but you're doing both. You found a balance between both. And they love that. That's that's really inspiring to them, I think. I want to pull out one or two of these cards and see if there's anything that you want or anything that they want to add to this. playfulness. So despite being very driven and very goal oriented, goal, goal oriented, yeah, um, they still see you as a playful, fun person to be around. The tower card here is kind of interesting because this card is, I just realized I didn't talk about this, um, this card is usually about like big major changes, um, something that really shakes you, something that really kind of forces you to reevaluate something, reevaluate your situation, rebuild yourself differently. And it's interesting because group two got this card as well, um, which the tower a lot of times has kind of negative connotations, not always, but usually, um, just because it's intense and it's usually representing something that's kind of scary and unexpected. But I think for you guys, this is saying something similar to what it was saying in, in group two's reading. And that is that, oops, that is that you have shown them that there's there's more to life than what they initially or what they used to think. It's kind of like you've given them an example of what they aspire to be. So I'm getting really strong admiration from this person towards you. This is a bit more this energy is, in general, a bit less romantic than the other two readings today. Um, it's not to say that this couldn't be a love interest or someone that you're involved with romantically, but in general, this is, this is a real sense of admiration and aspiration, like, this is someone I want to be like. This is someone I want to emulate. So it's like this person really looks up to you. And again, playfulness is saying you're not just one thing or the other. It's not, you know, all work and no play with you. You are balancing work and play you're balancing the physical and the spiritual. Um, you, 
you're showing them that there are there's more to life that there are more ways to live than than what they previously thought so that's interesting like I said, not a lot of romantic feelings here that are coming through super strongly, but this could still be a love interest or a romantic partner. Um, if that is the case, I feel like this person sees you as kind of mysterious, kind of like someone they want to pursue. You're a little bit, okay, it's like they, they perceive you as being a bit coy, a bit standoffish, but in an attractive kind of way, in the way that makes them want to make the effort to get to know you better, that makes them want to work to get closer to you. It's like they want to prove themselves to you. They want to prove themselves that that they're worthy of your time and your love and your energy um, so again there's just that um, feeling like you're a powerful person you're someone who's kind of above me so that's a really interesting kind of mentality to have about somebody, but that seems to be how they're seeing you, and that's what I'm getting as far as the things that they like about you. Um, again, uh, kind of like group two, I'm not getting a lot of physical characteristics that they really, really enjoy, or at least there's not a lot that's coming through real strongly here. Um, Let me see. If this is a love interest, I think that one physical trait that they really like about you is your chest and neck, like your collarbone area. So if you wear tops that are kind of low cut, that really like show off your neck and your collar and, you know, cleavage, um, they love that. They can't get enough of that. Shoulders as well. And also I'm getting the mouth. They really like your mouth. It looks very soft and very kissable <laughs> to them. It's something about, it's just something about the shape of your mouth, the shape of your lips, and like things that you do with your mouth. So maybe you're a lip biter, maybe you have a, a habit of like sticking your tongue out a little bit, like if you're thinking about something real hard, you know what I'm saying? Um, something, something that you do with your mouth, the way that you... Like, I don't know, like the position that your mouth just kind of naturally falls in. For some of you, it definitely is lip biting that they really love. If you have like a, a lip piercing or some kind of oral piercing and you maybe have a tendency to like play with it a little bit, that's <laughs> kind of captivating to them. I feel like they would, they, um, they like to just watch you do that. Okay, group three, um, I think I'm going to leave it there. So that's what I have for what your person of interest likes about you. I hope this was uh, interesting. I hope that this resonated with you. If, um, if it didn't, I apologize. Maybe try a different group. Um, or maybe I'm just not your reader. Um, but there's tons of other readers out there. One of them is bound to be on your wavelength, and maybe I'm just not. So, thank you for joining me anyway. Um, I hope that I see you next time, guys. We're going to move on now to group four. 
All right, group four. So let me decide here which deck I want to use for you guys. I think I want to use... I think I'm going to use the Golden Tarot for you guys. Um, yeah, okay. So, group four, what is your person like about you? What does group four's person like about them? We have the five of coins here, the sun. Bit of an interesting start here already. Knight of Pentacles, the Fool, whoa, the Moon, the Three of Swords, okay, and let's get one more, Eight of Wands. Okay, so um, the first thing that I'm getting with the Fool card and the Sun here, I'm getting a bit of a childlike quality. Um, this person seems to see you as not childish necessarily, but childlike. So maybe a little bit naive, a little bit innocent, um, because the Fool card, it has that energy of innocence, something new, something fresh just starting out. It's optimism it's enthusiasm for the future and the sun card i mean we have this baby on the card um so it does have that association with children but also this card is radiance it's warmth it's positivity it's you know the sun is really the best card in the whole deck um so this is telling me that this person this person sees you as innocent childlike pure, wholesome, maybe a little naive at times, someone they want to protect, it's interesting that we have the sun and the moon here, I just noticed that, um, and they came out, you know, right one on top of the other, so I'm seeing that this, okay, so with the five of coins and the three of swords here, these are two pretty heavy cards. These are two cards that really talk about loss, sadness, grief, emotional turmoil, you know, and I feel like what these two cards are saying is that you, the person watching this, has experienced a lot of loss or a lot of grief or just a lot of hardship in general in your life. And I think that the person that you're thinking of knows that or they recognize that somehow, even if you've never really outright talked to them about it. There's some part of them that recognizes that you, you know, you've kind of, you've been through a lot. You have had some really not great experiences and you've really kind of been through it, but you still, you still manage to be kind. I got my blanket on because I'm cold. Um, you still manage to be kind and good-natured good and kind-hearted and soft. The word soft is coming to mind. And so that's something that is extremely admirable to them. It's like you have not allowed 
the pain you've experienced to make you hard or cruel towards other people. That's something you totally could have done. That's something that lots of people do. They experience bad things. It makes them resentful. It makes them, you know, cold and kind of hateful towards other people, but that's not, that doesn't seem to be the case here. That seems, it seems like if anything, it's made you more empathetic to others, more, you know, open to being helpful to other people and, you know, sympathetic. And they love that. They really admire that about you. They admire your strength. They admire your courage. Um, the moon card does imply that there is still some mystery there. So they may not know the extent of your past. They may not know a ton about, you know, who, I mean, who you are just in general. There's, there's this element of mystery there, but that in and of itself is very appealing because it makes them want to find out. It makes them want to find out more about you. It makes them want to know exactly who you are. It makes them really want to get into your head and figure out everything about you, figure out how your brain works, you know, what you think about things, how you feel about things. This person wants to really get under your skin, not in a bad way, not in the sense that they want to annoy you or anything like that, but just to know really, like firsthand, like really who you are. The Knight of Coins is a very grounded, stable, consistent energy. The Knight of Coins is... I'm seeing this as a figure who is going to stay put no matter what happens. You know, even in the face of, like, a storm, some, some really crazy stuff going on. Uh, a storm comes to mind, like a really bad storm, like a hurricane. This is a figure that's going to stay put in the face of that storm, not retreat, not, you know, turn back, because what lies ahead is rough. This is a figure that's going to stay right where they are. That's going to actually continue to move forward slowly, but steadily. So that tells me that they see you as someone who is not easily intimidated, someone who does not easily back down from things. And that is really, really, I mean, what can I say? They love that. They really like that about you. It's almost like this person kind of sees you as like their hero because you're just so strong and so powerful and so, and yet so kind and, and good. So it's kind of like you're everything that they aspire to be. And with the Eight of Wands here, this card is about excitement, enthusiasm. It really talks about, it can be about change. It can be about communication. The wands in general have this energy of passion and movement. I feel like, I feel like that's talking a bit more about, you know, in spite of some of your experiences in spite of things going wrong in your life, you still have that sense of optimism, that sense of contentment, that desire to keep moving forward. I want to pull out one or two oracle cards and see if there's anything they want to add to this. We have, it is safe for you to love and forgiving and learning. So, forgiving and learning. It's like, this is really going hand in hand with the Three of Swords and the Five of Coins. From this person's perspective, they see that you have experienced a lot of bad things, a lot of negativity in your life. 
but you have chosen to, at least how, as far as they can see, you have chosen to not be, you know, really resentful of those things. You've chosen to view them as learning experiences and you have maybe not, maybe you haven't fully or exactly forgiven the people who hurt you or, you know, whatever, but you've moved on from it or you are moving on from it. You're making that effort to let it go and not let it define you, control you. You're making an effort to heal yourself and become a better person because of it. And it is safe for you to love. It's like, um, again, despite despite difficulties despite hardships you're still you're still kind and soft-hearted and you're still trusting or you make an effort to trust i feel like for a lot of you you've let this person in when you may not have let many others in so i think that person i think this person is very i think this person recognizes that you have really kind of taken a risk by letting them close to you and they're very grateful for that again this person sees you as very childlike they see you as someone that they want to protect and care for not that you're not that you aren't capable of protecting and caring for yourself but they just want you know they just want to be there for you they want to help you I feel like for most of you, this person that we're talking about is physically bigger than you. You are physically smaller than they are, and that's kind of endearing because it's sort of playing upon that childlike quality that they see in you. You're kind of small but you're fierce you are very capable of taking care of yourself and you've proven that you're very capable of persevering and you've proven that i'm getting that this person for some of you would like to brush your hair Particularly if you have longer hair, they would like to brush it for you. <laughs> so that's kind of interesting. So they, there seems to be a little bit of a fixation on your hair um, and your skin also. They really find your skin very attractive, not in that creepy, like it puts the lotion on kind of way, but like... It, they just find it pretty. Kind of clear, kind of smooth, soft looking. Pretty. Pretty. The tone of it. The way the light reflects off of it. Pretty. Pretty. That word keeps repeating in my head. So group four, that's really, that's pretty much the gist of what I'm getting for you guys today. Um, I hope this was interesting. I hope that this resonated with you. Um, take what applies to you and your situation and leave the rest. This is just a general reading, so it's not going to be applicable to everybody who chooses it. Um, if this does not resonate with you, maybe try choosing a different pile. Or, you know, you and I might just not be on the same wavelength um and there's tons of other readers out there that you can try who probably will be so um yeah don't feel too down if it didn't if it didn't resonate with you and and if it did i'm glad um and do let me know so um i think that will do it and that's all of the groups for today 
uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you so much for joining me, and I hope I see you next time. Bye!